The first full padded practice went down for ASU today, and Kenny Dillingham says the big plays are coming. You are Locked On Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Levels. A special shout out to my everydayers who are here every day, and thanks for making us your first listen of the day. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications wherever you're getting your podcasts, and stay in touch with the show by following me on Twitter at RichieBrads36 and the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. Before we talk football, big important update here for the Frankie Collins saga. And this is, this is a really big development that we've got going on right now, because as soon as, as soon as Frankie Collins entered the transfer portal, you were worried as a fan because he was, he was very good. This was, this was by far your best player last year. He was good defensively. He was good offensively. A good handler, a good distributor. There was a lot that he did very, very well for the Sun Devils. So he enters the portal. You're really worried. He does mention that ASU is on a potential list for him to return, and he has now released his top six options. Of course, ASU is included, so there is still an opportunity for him to return. The other five schools are Cal, Florida, San Diego State, SMU, and TCU. A common theme with those schools is they have abilities here to shell out some cash through NIL opportunities. Florida, SMU, and TCU in particular are schools that can really give him an opportunity to make a little bit of dough for that name image likeness. So if that is when it ends up coming down to right, wrong, or indifferent, it's going to be one of those three schools. If it's beyond NIL, which for all accounts and purposes, it it really seems like Frankie's not worried about that stuff. He said as much before. If he does, then good for him. I mean, go get your bag. I'm always going to be that person. But if he if he truly is not worried about the NIL and just wants the best opportunity for him, then ASU is still going to be in play. Here's hoping they can end up convincing him to come back. But he's in their top, or he's there in his top six. That's good news. Let's go ahead and hop into football now. There's plenty to talk about here. And you've got what was a very back and forth practice and in a very good way. There was a lot of good plays for the offense. There was a lot of good plays for the defense. You saw guys that were going back and forth and jawing at each other. They were talking that ish. They were, they were yapping. They were yelling, screaming, shouting, getting excited, hyping their boys up. It was it was a good, infectious practice. You had a lot of fun being on the field with those guys and just hearing them and just seeing how much energy they're putting in. Kenny Dillingham said last year that he needed to install a culture and he needed to instill everything that he wanted these guys to, to epitomize for him. And... It was a process, and he told you last spring he didn't like the practices. There was a lot of work that needed to be done. A year later, he has said that there is definite improvement. He has said before that it's raising the minimum expectation, which last year was lower to try and get guys to buy in. So this year, you raise it. You try and get these guys to continue to buy in. By all accounts and purposes, it feels like people and players are are buying in to this. Hopefully that continues to be the case. But one of the things that Dilly highlighted was big plays coming. And we saw that from both sides of the football. And that's where I want to focus for just a moment is both sides were getting some really good opportunities to make the big plays. Offensively, this really showed out in one-on-ones. The first big one that comes to my mind is Jordan Tyson. And if you haven't seen it 
on Twitter yet. There's multiple people that have put up the video. I know I saw Chris Cartman put his up, so check it out. If you haven't, Jordan Tyson just goes up against the DB. I believe it was Keith Abney and is just able to get a clean release off the line. I understand he's not being pressed, but dude is just very fluid and just goes straight up the field on a little go route. He's able to make the catch and then boom, flips into the end zone. Just to show off a little bit, just to flex. It was a very impressive highlight real play. Like you were sitting there kind of in on, you're like, ooh, like you had to kind of contain yourself and remember that you're on the job and you're not a fan. You can't ooh and ah over that stuff because it, it was one of those plays where you want to ooh and ah over it. He's a stud. He's someone that I've been highlighting since he came to Arizona State. Unfortunately, he missed last year because he was recovering from a serious leg injury. He appeared in, I think, the last two games, but only played a handful of snaps, if any. Like He, he was not active last year. He is active now, and he's good to go. He practiced on Saturday. He practiced today. There seems to be no signs of him being slowed down or anything. It looks like he's 100% good to go, and if he is, that is an asset to this team, and that's somebody that can be such a massive difference maker for you. Very excited about him. There's two guys that have been grabbing my attention during spring ball so far these two once again stood out today and they really stood out in making sure that the offense was able to keep up with the defense and we'll give a little more love to the defense here in just a little bit but two guys on offense who have stood out to me the first one is george hart hart is the veteran running back on the team he's the voice in the locker room he is a leader and he looked really good in training camp last year. I really like George Hart and he just didn't really get his opportunities last year for one reason or another. He's back in spring. He looks good. He's playing good. And the thing is, this is a really deep running back room. Like you've got Cameron Scadaboo, you've got the Carlos Brooks and, and uh, Kyson Brown, Jason Brown will be joining eventually. You've got Relique Brown. Like there's there is no shortage of really good running backs and a couple of guys who could be next level players. So it's going to be difficult to stand out. But through spring ball, George Hart's doing a little bit of everything. He's catching the football. He's doing a really good job running between the tackles. He can cut it outside. He's able to plant his foot and make guys miss. Like he he looks dynamite. I'm so curious what ends up happening from here. Right now, Scataboot is running back one until further notice. Running back two, it's probably between, between DeCarlos Brooks and Relique Brown, probably, and whoever it's not between those two is RB3. After that, kind of up in the air. I'm saying if he has a really strong spring, and is able to carry that through the summer and into training camp, this could be a player that we're going to need to give a little more attention to. He, for me, is going to be my Javen Jacobs. Last year, I said Jacobs was going to be one of the secret weapons for the team. That, unfortunately, didn't materialize. But I have a sneaky feeling about George Hart this year, keeping an eye on him. But as much as I have loved watching George Hart, there is one player who has stood out even more for me, and that's Caleb Black. Caleb Black is the spark plug receiver for the team. He is going into his redshirt freshman year. He was able to get on the field a little bit last year. He got some jet sweeps. He had a single catch that went for negative two yards. Like He didn't get the ball too much, but you did see kind of that explosive ability and you were hoping that you could just keep developing him and see if he could start to unlock that. Well, through four practices now, he looks good. He looks really good. He, he looks like a player that is going to sneak up on guys and sure. He's not the biggest guy in the room, but he's quick. 
and he's shown the ability to catch the football and turn it upfield. Has he been perfect? No, there's been a couple of drops here and there. But for somebody that you really didn't see last year hardly at all, to now being able to build upon it in camp, you got to like that. And you got to like that. Hopefully he's able to continue stacking up good performances. Similar to George Hart, he's in a wide receiver room that has no shortage of weapons with Elijah Badger, Jordan Tyson, Xavier Guillory, Troy O'Mary, Jake Smith, Melcon Stovall. There's a lot of guys, and it's going to be difficult to get on the field. But if he, like I said, if he's able to stack these practices and performances, you're going to have a hard time keeping him off the field. George Hart, Caleb Black, continue to grab my attention. Jordan Tyson looked good today, but of course the defense was able to get their opportunities as well. And we're going to shout out the defense here in just one moment. This is the Locked On Sun Levels podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find the right professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else, and LinkedIn does all of this while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have as many qualified candidates and so easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn also knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding new ways to make the process easier and even launched a new feature that helps write job descriptions and makes the process even easier and quicker. Two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day and you have to turn the volume down with all the shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring the biggest stories without the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get back into our conversation. We're going to take a look at the defensive side of the football because it was a good day. It was a very good day for the defense. There were several interceptions. There were several uh, forced fumbles. Guys were getting into the backfield. It was a good day. What you really like to see were the interceptions. I didn't get to see the numbers of all the guys who got interceptions, but I do know that Rodney Bimage was able to get one of those. Of course, Bimage is one of the incoming freshmen for the team, and there's going to be some hype and some expectations to him and some of the other freshmen that are com- coming on, like uh, Tony and Kuba and Chris Johnson Jr. and Plas Johnson. Bimage is just another one of those guys that the program and Brian Carrington and Brian Ward are excited to see. and him getting those opportunities is just, it's cool to see, man, because this isn't a defensive back room that is short on talent. I mean, you've got Ed Woods returning. You've got uh, Cole Martin comes in as one of the uh, nickel defenders for the team. You have all the safeties. You bring in Javen Robinson. You bring in uh, LaTerrence Welsh, by the way, his nickname on the, on the sheet is LT. So I am probably going to start referring to him as LT. Just know if I do, I'm talking about LaTerrence Welsh. So LT's out there. They've got some other guys that are returning. They, they have no shortage of talent in the defensive backfield and the corner room. And Bimage is getting his opportunities and as of now, he's making the most of them. And again, he's not perfect. Like, I'm not going to try and paint that image. But when you get an interception in practice, you need to get a shout-out. So Rodney Bimage definitely gets a shout-out here. 
You have some other guys that are flashing as well. Obviously, Montana Warren continues to impress. The big dude lining up in the secondary, whether it's outside, inside, or safety, where you will see him the most. It is so hard to not notice number 18 running around, man. Like, he's so good. He's so good. We were robbed of him last year because of that leg injury. And as long as he's healthy, he's you you just get so creative with the ways you can use him. So you can play him deep, you can play him near the line of scrimmage, he can line up at the nickel spot and corner. Like that's one of the biggest boons that you have for this defense is a player that is just such a versatile chess piece for you that you can put him all around the alignment, have him do different tasks. Like he can cover, he can blitz, he can, he can be man to man, like whatever you're looking for. Montana Warren brings a little bit of all of that to the table. So if he's just able to continue mastering that craft, you're going to have just someone that you, you would be really hard pressed to take off of the football field. You want him out there, no matter if he's a safety or DB or whatever, like you just find a role for number 18. You keep him out there and keep in mind, this is a really good safety room as well. And Shamari Simmons is back there. And Xavier Alford is back there. Kamari Wilson, Ghost Rouser. There's, there's a lot of really good safeties back there. And Montana Warren continues to find a way to show up and show out for this team. Today was another good practice for him. He was making plays. He was flying around the field. Just like training camp, it's it's almost impossible to go to go the two, two and a half hours that you're out there and not see number 18 making some plays. The corners, too. The new corners that are coming in between LT Welch and Javen Robinson. Both of them made plays today. I think they both walked away with interceptions and shouldn't be surprised. They they were able to lock up and lock down and play really good coverage. You can see why Welsh was a former really high four-star recruit coming out of high school and going to LSU. You can see it. You can see that the gears are just moving in his head and he's he's understanding the game and it's potentially slowing down for him. I can't tell you if it if it's that drastically different from LSU because I know he didn't he wasn't a full time starter with the with the Tigers and whatever but from what I've seen he's impressive and he's someone that we highlighted over the past couple of months as like a hey you got to watch out for this guy former highly recruited kid blah 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 and now we're seeing him on the field and it's like yep that's that's what we were hoping to see We wanted to see this high upside athlete be able to start taking his game to the next level. And again, take it all with a grain of salt. These are overreactions where we're only in the second week of spring ball. Totally understand that. It's just hard not to notice a guy like LT who's making plays out there. Javen Robinson looked good too. Robinson played at Washington State. He had a year under Brian Ward before Ward came to Arizona State. So he was another guy I talked about as like a, hey, this could be like a Trey Brown situation where he just understands the defense and is able to kind of acclimate himself. Who knows? I like him. I'm not willing to to definitively say he's corner two or corner one or corner three or whatever, but he's having a strong uh, practice so far. And today was a good day for him. It it was a good day for several DBs. But Javen Robinson, to me, was someone that I noticed quite a bit when I was out on the the practice field today. Javen Robinson was making plays. Montana Warren was making plays. Uh, Bimage had an interception. LT was playing really good. You saw Alfred was flying around the field. There was lots of good plays from the DBs. Of course, the front seven was doing some work, too. They were getting pressures. They were delivering some uh, forced fumbles. There was, I think, two in the last sequence of practice today where they were able to punch that bad boy out. 
and they just swarm like it's it's an impressive group i am really excited to see how they continue building on this bad boy moving forward the the defense was so much better than people realized last year part of it was the veteran leadership part of it was the guys buying in and you saw all of that during training camp last year you're seeing it once again with spring ball and you're replacing a lot of guys. You're replacing BJ green Deshaun Mallory, Jordan Clark, um, row Torrance, Chris Edmonds. There was a lot of guys that you had to replace and there's guys that have stepped up into their place and we're seeing good results so far. So good for the defense, but today was a good day for turnovers. There was a slew of turnovers and it was really fun to watch. And it was something that I will be monitoring very carefully for Thursday's practice to see if that momentum can carry forward. But Kenny Dillingham did say that he believes the big plays are coming for this team. We're going to talk about that in more detail here in a second. This is the Locked On Sun Levels podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. I appreciate you guys, as always, for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. A shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. Let's go ahead and wrap up this practice with the biggest nugget that Kenny Dillingham gave to us in post-practice. Kenny said the big plays are coming. He said the gears are turning. He said you can tell these guys are gaining confidence. These guys are building momentum. There was a lot that you could just read from his body language. You could, you could see on the field. We talked earlier that Jordan Tyson was making big plays. We talked about George Hart. We talked about Caleb Black. You had good plays from Troy O'Mary, obviously. He had a touchdown as well and did a somersault into the end zone. Not quite as impressive as Jordan Tyson's uh, flip, but nonetheless, I mean, he was he was pumped. Jake Smith was making plays. Cameron Scadaboo was making plays. There was a lot a big place that were happening for the Sun Devils. And that was something that was absent from this team last year. One of the biggest reasons that they lost as many games as they did was because the offense just could not string together the big play. They couldn't play consistently. They couldn't win the battle in the trenches. They couldn't be able to set up the passing game and use the deep ball and attack defenses at all three levels. They look like they're they're just starting to get it a little more. And I wouldn't even say it's all the quarterbacks. It looks like it's the skill position guys that are just exceeding expectations right now. And that's not slander for Sam Levitt, Trenton Borgay, or Navi Bruzon at all. What I'm saying is that these skill position guys look like they're really getting comfortable and they look like they're they're just figuring everything out and they're un, they're able to understand the playbook better. They're growing chemistry with each other. It just looks good. Everything looks good. The running game especially looks really good. George Hart's not the only guy who's running hard. Cameron Scadaboo still looks good. Relief Brown is able to make really big plays as well. You've got a really good stable of running backs, and you're still waiting for Jason Brown to join you as a true freshman. This is a deep running back room, 
And the offensive line is playing well, too. They're finding ways to be road graders. They're finding ways to be those tough, physical bodyguards, I guess. They are, they're figuring it out. If everyone stays healthy, this offense should be drastically improved, drastically improved from last year. This is, this is a unit that you look at them and you go, yeah, they're pissed by how last season went. You can tell that they took it personally. Their inability to get into the end zone, their inability to convert third downs, their inability to get the big plays down the field. You can just see these guys have a different aura to them. They, they've got such a different attitude when they're on the field. There's confidence here. You have guys that are just, they're playing so well. Four practices in, it, it feels like you're looking at a different group. And keep in mind, that's with Elijah Badger not on the field. Once you plug Elijah Badger in and Jaden Rashada gets to be healthy at quarterback, this group's only going to get better. But right now, with trying to figure out who wide receiver two is, you got a very good problem to have because it's looking like it's going to be either Jake Smith, Troy O'Mary, or... Jordan Tyson, Melcon Stovall, someone who I have said is going to be in that competition is still right there. They got a really good problem at receiver right now, and they're playing very good football by themselves from the fundamental standpoint. They're finding ways to be able to get open, catch the football, and make a play. The running backs, they read their blocks really well. They're able to set things up. They make the cuts. They can plant their foot. They catch the football really well, really confidently. Tight end, Bryce Pierre looks good. You've got uh, Marqueston Douglas, who, God, he's just, he's big, dude. He looks like a left tackle out there. He is, he is a big dude. And when he gets rumbling, he's, he's going to hurt some people. Uh, Cameron Harpole is out there. Like they, they're, they're getting confidence. That's the thing I notice. These guys just look and act and play and practice like they're ready to prove people wrong. And that's where Kenny Dillingham says the big plays are coming. Kenny Dillingham said that you're going to start seeing it come together. And slowly but surely, this offense is going to find a way to be dynamite. The way that Kenny Dillingham was talking about him, I mean, you could just tell. He, he is very excited for these guys to get going. And he's not fangirling or anything like that. But you can tell, you can just tell that when Kenny is talking about this group, he is seeing that improvement and he is seeing these guys just look better. I I really think that they're they're going to have something special here. It's really hard to not think that way. It's infectious the way these guys are playing. You feed off of the energy. You see them shouting, laughing, talking smack to each other. You see them running around the field. They're jumping. They're waving. They're, they're having fun out there. But more than anything, these guys look dialed in. And again, I'll preface it. And I'll continue to preface it with this. It's spring ball. It's day four practice. Overreactions. 100%. But from where you saw this team last spring to where you're seeing them this spring, it's it's such a drastic difference. Kenny Dillingham says it's, it's raising the minimum expectation. And I think that they're blown it away. I think these guys are all bought into the culture and you're bringing in the right people, and the right guys are staying, and the coaching staff is 99% returning, everything is just lining up for these guys. Everything is falling into place. Everything is slowing down and making sense for the coaches, for the players, for everybody that's involved. They just get it. It's been really fun to see these guys working, and it's going to continue to be fun to see these guys working. So I will keep you guys posted 
on everything that's going on with practice. Now's never been a better time to hit that like and subscribe button and turn on notifications wherever you're getting your podcasts and stay in touch with the show by following me on Twitter at RichieBrats36 and the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. As always, I appreciate you guys for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. And a shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. I will be keeping you guys posted not only on ASU football practices, but as the Frankie Collins situation unfolds as well for ASU basketball, we'll be in touch with that. I'll keep you guys posted. I'll see you next time. Until then, you keep it locked right here on Locked On Sun.